You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. We are touching on a subject that I think deserves a lot more attention. Why? It's because drone pilots are killing people. Ouch. Literally. My name is Paul. That's a heavy hit and start. My name is Rob. This is episode number 1025. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for hanging out with us. Hope you enjoy the show. Hope you do as well. Let's get right into today's question because what do I mean by drone pilots are killing people? Well, it may actually make sense once you hear the question. So let's just go right into today's question. Hey, Paul and Rob. My name is Casey Gabriel and I'm a part 107 certified pilot with only 35 hours of flight time in. I'm trying to get a drone program going in our SAR team and have two related questions. How many flight hours would you recommend a pilot should have before being allowed to fly for a SAR mission? Secondly, would you include that number in your drone policy for the team? These questions stem, of course, from the lack of knowledge our team has of drones and what it really takes to be a pilot in the field. Your answers will be greatly appreciated and a great help. Thanks. Thank you, Casey. Uh, Very cool that you're putting some effort into something so important, but even cooler that you understand that you don't want untrained pilots being a part of it. And, and I gather that you're kind of including yourself in that, which uh, is awesome. That's the right perspective. So this is actually probably a little bit more complicated than simply how many hours do you fly because it's the type of hours and it's what kind of experience, right? It's just not the number of hours. That's like saying if I fly for 10,000 hours, I'll be a fantastic pilot, right? And it's like not if you've been flying real estate the whole time. You know what I mean? Right. If yeah. you've been doing it's like a horse that just goes exactly. around in a circle. Exactly. Just because you're good at NASCAR doesn't mean you're good at driving on the highway. I'm sorry. Like, you know what I'm saying? You probably are good at driving on the well, highway, but a perfect example. <laughs> your right turns probably suck. <laughs> a perfect example is the world champion, our friend Night Fury. Oh yeah. And then you get a Phantom Four in his hands. And he can't even do a thing with it. God bless him. That which was is funny, funny to watch. Which is funny because all the FPV pilots talk so much trash against Phantom pilots. And it's like, look, you may be able to fly FPV racing really, really well. But that does not mean that you're also going to be a good Inspire pilot when you have to fly yeah. line of sight. And he's not one of the ones that talks trash as far as no, I know. No, 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 he's not. And thanks for clarifying that because uh, Sean's a phenomenal human being. He's a stand-up leader and I wish more people were like him. But that being said, what do I mean about drone pilots are killing people? Right? Pretty bold statement to make, right? Well, before we answer the question about how many hours should a particular operator have before they conduct a search and rescue mission, I think it's extremely important to understand that if your ego gets in the way of you making a rational decision about how qualified you are as a pilot, you could literally kill someone. What do I mean? Well, if you're a drone pilot that goes out to a search and rescue mission, like there's a certain group here in New Mexico as well, that thinks that they know everything about flying drones. But if you're not familiar with how to systematically cover a given search area where you can document how you've covered that area systematically, you can ensure that you've covered that area and some overlap, and you can also prove that you've covered that area you could end up costing someone their lives. Because if you go out there as a drone pilot and you don't understand the chain of command and how you have to coordinate with everyone in command in order to fly so you don't get in the way of helicopters or other planes, well, that could be your first deadly mistake. But your second deadly mistake could be hey, I'm just going to go up and fly and I'm going to look through the drone camera and I'm going to take some video and oh yeah, I'll take some pictures. What if you miss literally the flight line by a few feet? As another famous drone instructor, well, he's not a drone instructor, he's a flight instructor, Gene Robinson has said in one of his previous videos that he's like, I literally missed someone by a few feet in the flight line. And if I would have just been more systematic, and this is why he preaches system, system, systems, Mm -hmm. we would have found that person. And it just goes to show if you do not have a thorough plan before you even show up about how to systematically cover an area, how to take pictures with that area, how to ensure the area has been covered, how to work in conjunction with a command crew, and in number three, how to ensure the 
quality of the data. And then how are you going to look through all those images? Not to mention the emotional side of it, because you've got families that are going to be out there going potentially crazy, right? Yep. So you've got to be able to keep your calm. Yeah. And here's the thing. If you just say you're going to go out and like fly around in a systematic pattern and take video, you're killing someone. If you're going to say that I'm going to go out and take, uh, you know, I'm going to go fly around and, and just look through the drone camera view, you could end up killing someone because your vision is limited and you can only see so much on a small screen. Now, while this has worked in certain operations, like the older person that was found in Florida recently, notice that they had a systematic operation. And that is so important. I have to say, it's just so critical that anyone who's flying for search and rescue, I would require you to have hundreds of hours of experience. I would then require you to have, I believe it's called the, the NIMS training. Um, NIMS 100. I think it's called NIMS. Yeah. Yes, it is called NIMS. NIMS. National Incident Management System FEMA training. You should have taken and passed the 100, the 700, and the 800 course. If you haven't done those, you're not flying on my search and rescue mission. That's for damn sure. Second of all, if you can't prove that you have at least two or 300 sorties, then guess what? You can't fly on my site anyway. If you, if you don't even know what a sortie is, then you're definitely not flying on my site. Because, I mean, I know you've heard me say that word before, Rob, but do you remember what a sortie is? Just a flight. It's a flight, takeoff mm -hmm. and landing. It's a mm -hmm. complete flight, okay? Right. Very important. So NIMS training, command and control protocols. You know how to work with incident command. This is so critical because it's so important that everyone understands there's a drone in the area. Because if another helicopter comes in, you need to get out of the way as you're supposed to yield to manned aircraft. But also, there are agencies across the United States who have worked in conjunction with aircrafts or with other aircraft to say, hey, look, we can work together in the same airspace as long as we're communicating. This is why communication is so important. Mm -hmm. But this is also why having a systematic means of covering an area is so important. It's also really important to have a systematic means of looking through those photos. This is why in our search and rescue class, we have a solution for all of those things, because we believe that only the most experienced drone operators should be operating on search and rescue missions because they could literally kill someone with their ignorance. That's why. Yeah. So I guess that he was asking about whether or not the number of hours should be in their policies. I think you've just given them several things to be in their policies. Uh, yeah. Right. And, and obviously it's going to be way Sorry. beyond that. I'm a little aggressive. I'm, I shouldn't berate people with my knowledge. That is not how we're going to get people through things. I want to help everyone. I don't want to beat people up with knowledge. But oftentimes when I get aggressive, Rob, it's because I'm so passionate and I care so much. And it's kind of like one of those things that you can't really ignore. So I so excuse me if you guys think I'm berating people with, with information. I'm not here to you know, be on a pedestal and tell everyone how stupid they are. I'm just trying to say, look, we have to all learn together because the consequences of misinformation are extreme. So what do you say to somebody that says, look, totally hear what you're saying and, and we get it and we agree. However, what if we're the only option? Is it better to at least put a drone up and see what we can figure out if there's nobody else that can help? Right. I mean, I don't see a downside to that. So help me on if there is a downside. I see what, a downside. I mean, okay, what is it? Well, let's say if let's say they have the option of having a helicopter go in. I'd prefer the helicopter. Okay, over but the you don't have the option of a helicopter. That's my point. There are no other options other than groundwork. Why not? Mm. I mean, I see it's not Tough question. I understand it's not best case. And I'm just trying to kind of fill that gap of if I've got let's say one of my kids missing in the Sandia Mountains. Of course, that's not a good example because there'd be a lot of solid options here, including us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would be a good option. <laughs> but, but let's just say hypothetically those options aren't there and there's no helicopters available, whatever. And there's a guy that says, hey, I have a drone and I'm pretty good with it. I'm not great with it. I haven't done a lot of SAR stuff, but I'm happy to throw my drone up there and see what I see. I'm like, I'm gonna be like, hell yeah. I mean, why would I say no to that? True. I just think as someone, you know, this is why this show needs to get out is because it's really, it's really simple to, to take a tool that can be, you know, minuscule in help, or let's just say Absolutely. on a sliding scale of minuscule to very helpful. For sure. Um, that person, that person's knowledge is, is, is going to detract from their efficiencies. Um, Agreed. 
But if we can get out there in the general public to say any drone pilot who, who does search and rescue should understand how to do systematic planning. Yes. Communicate with incident command and then utilize a program to cross check and reference their photos that they were taken. Because, you know, my first thing is if your drone pilot goes up there and takes a bunch of video, it's, it's completely worthless. Like literally he shouldn't even be there worthless. Yeah. Now, if he goes up and takes a bunch of photos, that may be helpful. Now, if he goes up and takes a bunch of photos in a systematic means to cover a particular search area, now we're talking. Mm -hmm. Now, if he then uses those photos to utilize in a particular software or uh, online system where they can go through these photos based on contrast based color and identify certain areas, now we're really talking. Sure. Right. So to answer your question, if you had no other options, is it a viable option as long as he's taking pictures? Now, or he has an appropriate camera that can pick up the heat, right? That kind of No, I mean like any time the search and rescue has gone beyond 24 hours, there's zero point using thermal. Well, no, no, I'm assuming that he's alive. <laughs> this is a this is a happy <laughs> Well, example. I mean, and, but here's the thing, Rob, is, is that example. most search and rescue are is not happy. It's search and recovery. I understand. And that's the sad part is that drone pilots are typically brought in at the end of this whole thing. And I'm not trying to get frustrated with you. I'm not frustrated with you. I'm just saying that like, like I, I want to be happy and roses and unicorns, but like, but at the same time, I think it's important to be realistic. And I think it's important to also I showcase agree. that these are some major problems. For and sure. if we can educate everyone as a whole to say systematic coverage pictures sure. way to check it absolutely but 100 percent agree but i didn't yeah i'm no, not I'm sure that, i'm not no no you're not i i I'm no not, no i am i'm not sure no. <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that I answered your question in a way that, that is, is satisfactory. Because you don't have to answer a question satisfactorily. You just need to answer the question, right? Well, you're let not me here ask to you. satisfy me. You're here to Based answer the question. Based off of what you've heard in this show and some random drone pilot were to come up to you. Here's what I would say. If there's a drone pilot who's uh -huh. standing next to me and I'm saying, and we're trying to get the people out there, the SAR people and so forth, I'm still telling them, come on, but I'm not going to tell him, nah, I don't need you. I'm not going to do it. So what would you tell him? I'm going to tell him, get your drone up there and let's see what we can figure out. Go take a bunch of pictures. It's going to depend on what kind of camera he has, and it's going to depend on what I know about the situation, how long I know my son's been missing. It's going to depend, but I'm just going to not just wait and say, we don't need to use your drone not going to happen. I'm going to say, get up there. And as soon as the actual trained professional SAR people show up, then they can kick his butt out and do their work. Would right? you tell him to, to try to figure out some systematic way to cover the area? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and, yeah. But I, what I'm all, all I'm trying to say is that I think if we can educate people as a whole, not just drone pilots, that mm. this could go a long way. I No, I totally agree. Because I totally agree. I, I just was kind of wanting to fill in that little bit of a hole because... When someone's in a desperate situation, you don't want them to have to tell that person with a drone that, yeah, you you didn't take the Sims training, so I don't want you trying to help me. Sims. I, yeah, but yeah. What did I say, Sims? Sims. Yeah. I like that better. Sims. <laughs> fly fisherman. If you fly fishermen, you know why I said Sims. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> hey, they have some great fishing in northern New Mexico. <laughs> yes, they do. Anyways, no, no, no. I'm 100% I'm with you. I just kind of wanted to clarify that. Well, you bring up a good question. That point. Yeah. Right? You bring well, up a good you. question. What there is a drone guy there. And you're emotional and your son is missing. Are you really gonna tell that guy no? Well, exactly. All I'm no, saying I'm is I'm not saying don't tell him no. I'm saying what you need to do is how are you gonna do this in a systematic way? That way when yeah. we wanna verify your data that you covered a certain area, we can do that. A hundred percent. Yeah, and so and that's why you're talking about educating everybody, not just drone pilots that are flying SAR. If everybody knows that and their son is lost in the hills, then they can tell the drone pilot who's standing there. These hypotheticals are kind of goofy sometimes, but nonetheless, yeah, maybe they're educated and can tell them to do something like that, which I think is great. But even better if the drone pilot already knew that because he listens to our show. That's why on that bombshell, you should share the show. <laughs> Please. <laughs> share it. Share it. I want to hear your feedback, too, on this one. I have a feeling this one's going to get people fired up. For sure. I already know two people right now that I'm going to get text messages from as soon as this goes live. So <laughs> anyway, I'm sure Bill, too, is going to be like, hold on a minute. Technicality here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it, Bill. God, my phone is definitely going to get blown up by Bill. So <laughs> Let's hear it. Anyway. Uh, 
But uh, please do share the show. Um, by the way, we do have a search and rescue class coming out very shortly to cover these very, very important issues because we have seen more problems uh, than solutions coming up with uh, search and rescue and drones. So um, anyway, that's going to do it for our show today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Uh, make sure to check out our upcoming SAR class. And we have a great video that we hope will go viral to showcase the power of some new technology that's come out. But my name is Paul. His name is Rob. He already said that. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.